and welcome to Biostock Studio. Curasight began May by announcing a global partnership for Utrace. The partnership with Curium concerns the commercialization and development of Utrace within prostate cancer. We are joined by CEO Uli Kasilnikov and co-founder and CSO Andreas Kier via Link today. But we will start with the CEO, I guess, as you should. Welcome, Ulik. Thank you very much, Cecilia, and thank you for the invitation to uh, Firestock uh, for also set some uh, flavor on this uh, agreement for, for which is very important for Cure Site. And uh, yeah, I, it's uh, also what we hope that will uh, when we look in the future will will uh, also be uh, highlighted that this is uh, really a milestone for for, for Cure Science also in the development where we are right now with the, our U Trace uh, platform. Yeah, like you say here, it's a very exciting deal and it's a big step for Curasight. Could you just briefly tell us how this deal is is structured? Yeah, first of all, it is what you call an exclusive global license and collaboration agreement with Curum. And uh, that is for the purpose of development and also commercialize our U-Trace uh, product within prostate cancer only. So it's only for diagnostic and risk stratification purpose. So it's only a minor part of our uh, whole uh, platform via uh, and pipeline. Uh, you can say that this uh, deal is covering. Furthermore, we also think it's very important because it validates uh, our U-Trace uh, diagnostic platform within prostate cancer by an industrial player in, in this field. So by that, it is also very important. You mentioned uh, an industrial player here. Who are Curium? Curum is uh, the world largest nuclear medicine company, and they are experts in developing and manufacturing and also actually commercialize uh, world-class uh, radio pharmaceuticals uh, globally. And that is very important to emphasize also uh, that we that is the best partner we, we could wish <laughs> if we, if we, we should pick one. So uh, specific within this uh, area, they, uh, yeah, they are the, the one uh, to, to, to enter a partnership with. And furthermore, they also have proven skills for, within this field as they have previously proven uh, a track record for commercial products like DetectNet, which is used within the neurodegenerative tumors. So they have both the uh, muscles and the competences and the know-how how to, to, to handle this uh, from, from the laboratory to, to the, uh, the physicians out in, in the hospitals. And if we turn to the financial side of this uh, agreement, how, how is that structured? Will you pay for the development or? No, uh, the minor part will be covered by the milestones. Uh, uh, we, we are uh, obliged to, to get up to 70 million US dollar in milestones uh, for the development, but also uh, part of the will be covered by commercial uh, milestones. The main part of our development uh, will be covered by the milestones. And as a fine, oh, no, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and on top of that, we will also gain a, a two digit royalties uh, of sales upon uh, commercialization. And that is also very attractive as the market is uh, calculated. If you take ACB's uh, report, uh, which we have uh, initiated commercial research with, it's around uh, 2.8 uh, billion uh, Danish crown uh, yearly just within this indication. So, also very attractive for, for that part. That was good because I was going to ask you about the market, but then I will, uh, as a final <laughs> question, instead ask, yeah. do you have any other, because this is for prostate cancer, do you have any similar discussions about partnerships for other indications? Yes, uh, we do, but I'm not able uh, to comment on sp more specific topics in, in those uh, areas, but uh, definitely it will also strengthen the appetite from, from other partners, uh, as we also have the, the therapeutic uh, options uh, with you treat. But definitely, uh, this is uh, very interesting. And we have uh, uh, ongoing discussion also with the other. Uh, but what, what I'll win, I cannot say <laughs> about uh, right now, uh, unfortunately. But maybe we will do another interview when you can tell us more. Hopefully, hopefully. I will be glad to. <laughs> I look forward to that. And thank you so much for today, Ulrich. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining this uh, interview. Thank you. And with that, we will turn to co-founder and CSO, Andreas Kier. Welcome, Andreas. Thank you very much. Nice I, to be here. I thought that as you are the chief scientific officer, we'll talk with you about the, the indication of prostate cancer. And my first question is really, how is prostate cancer diagnosed today? 
Yeah, it's a good question. Actually, diagnosis uh, covers uh, several aspects, and and the primary diagnosis that is typically by uh, by a blood sample or by uh, by feeling that the prostate gland is enlarged. This is not really uh, the target for you trace, but uh, then there's the diagnosis or the follow. Uh, of the tumor and to see how aggressive it is. And that is exactly what, what uh, U-Trays want to do. And today, uh, this is called active surveillance. You, you follow the patients with a localized disease that is not yet aggressive, and then you take blood samples uh, and then repeated biopsies. So every year or every three years, a biopsy is taken and there will be a readout on, on how aggressive the cancer is. By the way, the initial diagnosis is always set by a biopsy and pathology. Uh, that needs to be uh, settled to know that the patient has a localized disease. But if I understand things correctly, there are some issues with this method of, of repeated biopsies and so on. Yeah, that definitely. There, there are actually... Uh, uh, many issues with it it's it's uh, first of all it's not very gentle uh it's it's unpleasant i can always tell if people uh, tried it themselves and then 10 percent of the uh, biopsies are hampered by side effects bleeding or uh, infection and after all these samples are actually taken through the rectum so part of the intestine so basically you inoculate bacteria uh, into the prostate uh, gland and therefore uh, several patients will will have some degree of fever and and infection. So this is this is on how gentle is and side effects. But but more important is actually that it's quite unreliable and it is taken mostly as what is called random biopsies. So you take typically twelve biopsies and then you hope that some of the biopsies will actually cover the most aggressive part of the tumor. But if if they don't, you get a false readout. And we call this sampling error. So you get something that may look more benign than it actually is if you missed the most aggressive part of the tumor. And, and for this reason, uh, typically the doctors today apply a better safe than sorry strategy because they know in the back of their head that yes, this looks relatively benign, but that must also be because we actually miss the most aggressive part. And therefore, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's considered that, that the surgical procedure where you remove the whole prostate gland, prostatectomy, that actually four in five of these procedures are, are, are unnecessary, simply because, yeah, a better safe than sorry strategy is applied. And I'm guessing this is where you trace comes in. <laughs> That, that was a good guess. This is exactly where we hope to make a difference for the patients. Uh, the reason for this is that, that the U-Trace technology uh, is looking at UPAR, and UPAR is a marker of aggressiveness. It's well known from lots of studies, the higher UPAR is, the more aggressive the cancer is. So we, so we have a readout of this. But the real, but you could say biopsies can also look at on how aggressive the cancer is. But the real, real benefit is that we cannot sample wrongly. Uh, because when you do imaging, it's 3D imaging of basically the whole body, but in particular of the whole prostate gland. So it's not like we looked in a wrong place. Uh, we can easily find the most aggressive part of the tumor, which is the part that lights up most uh, with you trace. And, and for this reason, uh, our data so far indicates that it's a very reliable method for, for risk uh, stratification. It's more gentle because you are not uh, cutting in, but hopefully also the doctors will acknowledge that it's more reliable. It remains to be proven, of course, in the studies, but hopefully once those data is there, then it should also lead to less overtreatment because you trust uh, this follow-up procedure uh, more. So as a final question, if you could just summarize, what would it mean for patients if U-Trace became available? Yeah, it would it would mean for patients first of all that they uh, would have a more gentle method to be followed. It's just a scan where you lie for twenty minutes and and then you're done. Uh, they would be more likely to follow such a surveillance program because it is gentle and it's known from U.S. studies that people tend to drop out of the repeated biopsies. And finally, it would also may uh, mean that 
less of the patients are unnecessarily operated on having their uh, prostate gland removed. And this is not trivial because remember I said four out of five patients are unnecessarily operated on. They, they would never have changed, their cancer would never have gone uh, aggressive. And this is not trivial because of these patients, 70% will become, uh, will experience some degree of impotence and or urinary incontinence. So uh, the patients, unfortunately, today will never know because they thought it was good that it was removed. But the truth is that the majority would never have changed into aggressive cancer. And they would have been much better off if it had been left alone. They would not become impotent uh, and, and just being followed by scans. So this is the ambition that we can make a, a difference for, for these many, many patients, because it is the most common uh, cancer in males. Uh, and, and this localized disease that is not going aggressive is actually the most common among the prostate cancer types. So, so it's, it's a huge amount of patients we could hopefully help in the future. Well, thank you so much, Andreas, for taking the time to teach us a bit more about prostate cancer. You're welcome, and thank you for having me.